Welcome to Grammar and Punctuation video number six. In this video, we are going to continue on with pronoun usage. Let's start off with unclear pronoun referencing. This is where we have a pronoun that has more than one possible antecedent. Let's look at an example. To lessen disputes between children and parents, counsel them about displaying effective communication. Hopefully you can spot the pronoun them now my question is, what is the antecedent? The sentence seems to make the most sense with parents. Counsel parents about displaying effective communication. But could we replace it with children? We could. So we have a problem here. We need to clarify what we mean by them. Do we mean the children? Do we mean the parents? Do we mean both? I think the best answer in this case, depending on the meaning of course, is parents. To lessen disputes between children and parents, counsel parents about displaying effective communication. Maybe we would want both of these as the antecedent. So we could say, to lessen disputes between children and parents, counsel children and parents about displaying effective communication. We can run into antecedent confusion when we split a compound subject with nor or or. That means we have two people or a group and a person as a subject, but we're going to split these people or groups away from one another with nor or or. Let's look at some examples. Neither George nor Frank could navigate blank way out of the woods. Well, the rule here is that when we separate antecedents with nor or or, the pronoun agrees with the closest antecedent. Okay, so if we look here, we're going to have a pronoun. What is the closest antecedent? Well, that would be Frank. Neither George nor Frank could navigate. What is the proper pronoun here? One way to check this, or to make it easier, is to get rid of this first part. Okay? Frank could navigate his way out of the woods. Neither George nor Frank could navigate his way out of the woods. Okay? So we're agreeing with Frank here. The next example, neither George nor his friends could navigate... Well, the closest one is friends here. His friends could navigate their way out of the woods. So we have neither George nor his friends could navigate their way out of the woods. Here is a visual representation of the answers that we just looked at. So we know that Frank is what we're worried about here as an antecedent, and we're going to use his, and friends over here being there. So singular and plural. Another example, neither Jenny nor Frank could navigate his way out of the woods. So you'll notice I have a gender differentiation here. If we were to flip these around, neither Frank nor Jenny could navigate her way out of the woods. So that is how this problem of breaking up our subject with nor or or is solved. Another common pronoun error is known as a broad reference. A broad reference is a pronoun used usually at the end of a paragraph to summarize what the paragraph is trying to say. They are usually unclear. Let's look at an example. There have been many people who have mistakenly been incarcerated for murder and many who have been mistakenly released for crimes they committed. This is a major problem in Canada. The problem pronoun here is this. What exactly is this referring to? There are multiple points being made here, and this is being used to sum them all up, which is unclear. Let's look at a replacement for this final sentence. Improper incarceration and release are major problems within the Canadian correction system. So you can see I've replaced this with the antecedents once again. So remember, we want to avoid using this word to sum up an entire paragraph. Using pronouns with indefinite nouns can be a little frustrating. Most of us speak using indefinite nouns incorrectly because we identify them as plural, but in reality, these are treated as singular. The trick here is to look at these examples, anybody, anyone, and something, and split these words apart. You'll notice that they can be split into two. Any single body, any single one, some single thing. So remember, split these apart so that you can identify them as singular. 
Now that we've looked at indefinite nouns, can you tell me which one of these sentences is correct? Hopefully, you answered the second one. We know that every body can be separated into every single body, so it is singular. So we need a singular pronoun. His or her or her or his is our singular pronoun, not there, which is plural. So remember, everybody is singular, so his or her would be correct. You can swap indefinite nouns with he or she to test this theory if you find these indefinite nouns frustrating to deal with. So just simply switch it with a she, okay? She had her own name tag. He had his own name tag. Another common problem with pronoun agreement relates to collective nouns or agreement in number. So let's take a look at an example. I'd like you to pause the video for a second and look at this sentence and come up with an answer as to whether or not it is correct. Okay. When we look at this sentence, we have the university and using the pronoun they, meaning plural. Well, the university has many people that operate inside of it, but it is still a single entity. So these pronouns, they and their, are actually incorrect. Okay, the pronoun they does not match with the noun the university. The university is a single entity. Therefore, the correct answer would be attendance at the university grew so much that it had to expand its grounds far beyond expectations. So be careful with these collective nouns. When we have some sort of institution, the government, etc., or some sort of political party, maybe the liberal party, okay, these are single entities and they will have singular pronoun in 95% of the cases. So let's see if we can find the difference between the 95% of collective nouns that are going to be singular and that 5% that are not going to be singular. What about this first one? The class deserved its or their award. This one shouldn't be too tough because we have a single award. Okay, so that's a single class and a single award. So we're going to have its here. Okay, this is how collective nouns work most of the time. There will be times, however, when sentences are written in a way that collective nouns will not make sense as being singular. For example, the class sharpened its or their pencils. Well, you can see that pencils is plural. We can't have a class sharpening its pencils. It doesn't make any sense. So we have to move on to their. Okay, so once in a while when it doesn't make sense, these collective nouns will become plural. But in reality, most people don't write like this. This sentence would be, the students in the class sharpened their pencils. This would make the pronoun much clearer. But just be sure that you understand that once in a while, it won't make sense to be singular. So we're going to move with the plural pronoun. Pronoun case relates to point of view. And most students have very little trouble with pronoun case. So I'm not going to spend very much time covering this topic. I'm just going to give you a brief overview. Essentially, we have three points of view in English. We have the first person, where we use those personal pronouns. We have second person, where we use, use you, and we actually put someone into the story or the writing. And third person, where we have that more objective point of view. Most students don't mix these, so just stick to not mixing them. When you choose a point of view, stick to that point of view. The last thing that we're going to cover in this video is isolating compound pronouns. Compound pronouns are part of a compound subject. So when we have two actors or two people in the subject, we'll often have a pronoun at the end of this. And often when it's the writer, we're going to use the word I. For some reason, North American mothers love to teach their children this rule, so you probably already know it. This wouldn't be me and Jimmy Dean will go hunting this season. It needs to be Jimmy Dean and I will go hunting this season. Note that me would not work as a substitution. Jimmy Dean and me will go hunting this season. If we get rid of this half of the subject, it's even easier to see that. Me will go hunting this season does not work. I will go hunting this season does. 
Also, when we have a group and we want to have a title for that group, we say, we hunters love the smell of gunpowder, not us hunters love the smell of gunpowder. Once again, get rid of the other noun and leave the pronoun and see if it makes sense. We love the smell of gunpowder. So once again, we just need to remove that other noun and the sentence will still make sense to check. We can still use the compound pronoun check with linking verbs, but it works a little bit differently. You'll see in this example we have Engelbert and I are friends. That's fine. We get rid of Engelbert and, and we're left with I are friends. That doesn't make sense. So what we need to do is swap this linking verb to check. I am friends with Engelbert. Okay, so it's not me am friends or me are friends. It wouldn't be Engelbert and me. It just doesn't work in any way. So we can swap this out. But instead of worrying about that check rule, I think it's just easier to remember that with compound subjects, we're going to be using I and it's always going to come later. So Engelbert and I are friends. Now you'll see here I have an example of the opposite, where we don't have a compound subject. Engelbert will meet Dorothy and me. This one is correct. So just remember that me comes at the end of the sentence and I will come toward the beginning. That wraps up punctuation and grammar video number six. Uh, if you find any of these concepts confusing, please make sure to re-watch the video.